Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's video has been a very long time coming. We're going to be looking at uh, making a tutorial for you guys, breaking down some of our top tips and tricks for supporting jewelry models. And we're gonna be starting with one of the arguably hardest styles of jewelry to print and cast, that being filigree. Now we've already talked about filigree in a previous video um, where we reviewed Blue Cast X Filigree. You should definitely take a look at that video because it's very interesting and uh, it's gonna play a very large role later on when we actually start to do the printing. But before we get too far into it, I wanna thank today's sponsor for this video, Lychee Slicer. We're actually the latest members to Lychee's ambassadorship program. Um, before that, and actually kind of what generated all of this was I went and I, I bought one of the Lychee Pro Resin licenses and I've been using it for about a month. And I was, of course, aware of Lychee before, but it just impressed upon me how critical it is to have the right tools for the right job. With very powerful features like uh, the fan supports, island detection, uh, proximity detection, all sorts of really useful things, it saved us a heap of time, it saved us heaps of resin, all sorts of benefits that all benefit me on the bottom line as a business owner having to not throw away a quarter of my bottle to just supports, for example. So before we start the tutorial, um, again, like I mentioned before with the X filigree thing, picking the right resin for the right job is incredibly important. Some castable resins are specifically just not tailored to specific types of jobs. Whether it's Soriatech True Blue, uh, Resinworks 3D or Frozen uh, W40 or W20, there are plenty out there where you actually need to have larger support sizes because they're just a little bit softer of a material. So in this case, using something like fan supports might not be the best choice. So it's best to know in advance what kind of models are you going to be printing and casting so that you can then pick an appropriate resin for the job. So that all said, let's jump into it. Rings are largely a self-supporting object. If we cut one of these in half, we essentially have two arches. And the top one in particular is by and large self-supporting. Again, on like this little ring here, we may have some little issues around this tip. On the, on the engagement ring, we will have a couple of little spots that we need to support around the prongs on the bottom. Uh, don't even get me started on this dragon ring. There will be so much stuff. This is one of those examples where this is gonna just, this is the exception to the rule, this one right here. And then of course we have the filigree where you see it kind of like has this top fan piece and that is what's going to need the most supports. And uh, you know what, I wanna see what happens when I click magic <laughs> and let this uh, filigree model, oh, okay, it's done something completely weird. It's completely flipped it upside down. This is definitely not the way I have supported it in the past. It is now generating an entire forest of supports, not ideal. Um, I think this could use some, some improvement if we were to go in here, actually, let's uh, change visibility. We'll go to tips and bases. And now it, you're just seeing what happens, where all the tips are, and all of the, uh, the parent support lines have become white and transparent. This also helps if you have a slower computer, by the way, something that Lychee does really well. If you just wanna see certain areas, you can just see the contact points or what have you, so that it, uh, it's easier on your computer. So this is gonna completely destroy our design. If we click here on this one and we go and see what is this tip diameter, this is 0.6 of a millimeter. So let's drop that even to half a millimeter in size. That is still, I would say at least double the thickness of the design itself, which means that these are probably about 0.2 millimeter bars uh, creating the vast majority of this entire ring. In other words, if we were to break this off, it would destroy the entire model. So we're going to uh, command Z that, go back to where we were. So let's drag the slider all the way down and let's give ourselves a nice solid foundation. This is something that we have to do for every type of ring. However, in this case, you can see these lines, they start to radiate outwards. We don't wanna be enter uh, putting supports on those because those are details that will be lost to support heads if we're not careful. I'm gonna change my vis visibility to all. So we've got a nice solid foundation. All of these tip diameters are 0.5 millimeter as we can see here on the slider. The base length is three millimeter and the diameter is 0.5 or 1.5 mil overall. 
not bad. So let's watch this grow up. This is kind of what I was meaning by these rings are self-supporting in a way. The bottoms are arcs, so they, they grow up, they, they sweep, they sweep upwards. So you just need to make sure that your foundation is nice and strong so that they don't flex and bend and move. As soon as we get past that halfway point, they become an upward arc, like a, like a bridge. And bridges, as we know, are fairly strong. So if we were to just find that point, and if there's any other reasons for supports, I don't really see any. This is a, a pretty good, solid filigree design. There's not a whole lot going on uh, in, the, in the ring shank area. I think I'm gonna put one right up in here, where we reach the top of the arc. This is now becoming, let's, uh, going back to that bridge analogy, kind of like the keystone. We'll put one on either side because, as we know from the rest of the design, it grows into this fan design. So we're going to have plenty of opportunities to build off of both sides into the fan supports. Now, I noticed something here in the middle. This one actually has a bit of an island. As it grows in, the bottom of this becomes unsupported so we need to make sure we give something there I think we're going to hit the option button click and we'll drag that over and create a new solid support like a new parent you can see this this spiral turns into just the spiral expands so this is going to all need supports and this is where we're going to start doing the fans so again control option click Drag that down, and I'm going to change these tip diameters from 0.5 to 0.25. I'm going to change the bottom diameter from 0.5 to 0.4 because we don't really need a whole lot of stability with this. There's going to be stability in numbers with the fan supports, not so much, uh, they're not like load bearing. This is such a small, thin design. Uh, it's there's almost no surface contact area with the FEP as it's printing. So again, this is more for stability. I'm gonna add all these little fans. And the amount of space you put in between each of the fan supports is really dependent on your resin. If you're using our favorite resin, kind of like um, Apply Lab Works Cyan, for example, you're probably gonna wanna put a little bit more space in between those fans because what we've found as Cyan is a, it's not semi-transparent, but at this very thin, small scale, it behaves like a semi-transparent in that the fans will start to amalgamate. They'll be, they'll be like webbing in between each of the very thin uh, supports. So let's keep going up this spiral. So this actually continues all the way over. And I think it's about time that we bring in the other support into play here. So I'm gonna hit option, click, bring that down and create a new a new full support. And then from there, we're going to, again, build off the, reuse the fan and build those into that support there. Now from there, you can see all of these little spokes, as I mentioned before. Lychee will tell you that they will need support. However, as we know, they are heading upwards. So they're self-supporting. There's no need to put a support on every single one of these because getting them off would almost inevitably destroy the design or at least make it so that it just doesn't look good in the casting. From layer 575 up to 576, all of a sudden we have a sudden spiral in the middle of this design. Uh, that means that this entire section is parallel with the build plate. So it's flat on flat. Not such a terrible, terrible thing, but now we have to put in a whole ton of supports because, well, if it, if it doesn't print, there's things building on top of this, meaning that they won't actually exist if this isn't done well. So back to the fan supports. Let's go control, option, click, and drag that down. Actually, let's go to the other side because it makes it a little bit more visually easy for us to follow the spiral this way. The mini supports kind of create exactly like this design, actually, when you think about it. As long as they're all facing in the upward direction and they're all anchored to something, they should all work out fairly well. I'm going to change that last one because it was a little bit low down the parent. There, 
there and there. So this looks, again, kind of like a forest, but you have to remember that these are 0.2 millimeter heads, so they're not going to take up all that much force to break off. And of course, it's very, very critical that this particular section, because it grows into so much more, as we can see here, that this is well supported. Now, let's go, let's back out of this, because I think I see another issue right there. All of these little balls, these little like filigree balls that they've put into the design, all of those will have a bottom, which means that they're going to need supports. There we go. So all the balls right there are all islands. They're all going to need some support. We can build off of this main support, I believe. We can go here, option click. We'll make sure that this one is very small tip diameter. We'll go down to 0.2. And then we'll actually increase the tip length as well. Let's go to four millimeters. And now we have something to build our fan supports off of. So we'll go there, 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 and there. And just something to note, if you don't have access to something like this parent, Leechy will actually let you start self-supporting on the model itself with the, with the mini supports. They're not, they're not really fan supports anymore because, well, they're all kind of their own thing. But you can see here, I can take the bottom of this ball, I can click and bring it right to the model itself, and then it's just a little stick. And the stick, again, doesn't have a whole lot of supports, but the ball is pretty small, so it doesn't need a whole lot of, of actual supports. So let's fast forward a little bit right through. Um, I'm just gonna get this all supported. We can go back and review. It's largely all the same principles that I've already shown you. Um, we're just gonna, for the sake of time, fast forward to the very end. And that is everything. So with that now, hopefully you have the knowledge to have a fully supported file that you can then duplicate and reprint as needed. In my opinion, support, good supporting is one of the most underrated requirements for doing this whole uh, print to cast process. Because if you do it right the first time, then you have a file that you can just keep printing over and over and over again. You're gonna get consistently good results. It saves you tons and tons of time. So if you wanna see further tutorials, uh, make sure you leave a comment down below because we're more than happy to go into more detail about you know printing something big and heavy like this or optimizing your, your printed in place tree to just go supportless entirely, which of course would be the best possible option. So another huge thank you to Lychee for sponsoring today's video and accepting us into their ambassadorship program. If you're on the Lychee Discord, you might see us kicking around there. And if you're a member of our Discord or might soon become one, um, you'll see a Lychee support member in our Discord being able to help you guys through any problems that you might have using this software. So if you're interested in getting into our Discord and you want more help with the software stuff from Lychee or more one-on-one -on -one help from me doing casting or design work or whatever, um, you might want to check out that join button somewhere down below so you can get access to our Discord. So if this video helped you make that decision, uh, make sure you check out that link in the description below where you can get Lychee Slicer Pro on sale this Black Friday. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.